What did it feel like? Being a short-term gold silver bull today? How about this, How about Charlie? This, Charlie? With today's phony U.S. government BLS jobs report, often called the non-farm payrolls or MPLs, it was not hard to know that gold silver shorts would use that fake U.S. job report at 8.30 a.m. Eastern this morning to come flooding in with mass trading volume sales, looking to break gold silver long stop losses. What was hard to guess was that China's PBOC would overnight halt what was 18 months of straight Chinese gold reserve buying. Of course, this news was reported during seemingly lawless City of London hours to help kick off waterfall gold price declines of nearly negative 100 an ounce in today's spot gold silver market trading. Shortly, we'll get into educated guesses about where in the short and even medium term we might be going. But today's bloodbaths in spot silver and gold markets is yet another reminder about trying to day trade around and or speculate on short term hyper levered price discovery volatility. You see, the insiders have the inside information. We plebeians, we do not. In the long run, the rubber eventually meets the road as physical fundamentals run into brick walls, where shortages become more common throughout various layers of our industry. That doesn't mean the road from here to there is neither straight nor smooth, and not without casualties falling off cliffs along the way. Do not be one of them. That is why dollar cost averaging into directly owning prudent bullion positions is the foundation for any intelligent precious metal bull over the long term. For that which is on paper can often turn out to be just that, merely paper or digital worth nothings in short order. In the ongoing gold silver spot price battles, remember what we are caught between, whether we like it or hate it. A not all that very covert financial war in a fiat financialized warfare zone where the most powerful entities, there are literally next to no rules for them. For us, wise long-term plebeians, we know to at least respect their rig rules and position our long-term savings accordingly. The amounts of silly financialized market bloodbaths today were widespread, and they were even served live on YouTube in colorful Cooksville attire, with over a half million onlookers, many soon to be bag holders, cheering it all on. But we're not going to waste time with that sort of story. Not today, Hollywood pie in the sky, at least not today. And we're not going to get over emotional over today's spot gold silver bloodbaths either. We'll simply put into proper short, medium, and longer term context this week's most important bullion related news items as this weekly bullion market update proceeds right after this short message. Hello, this is James Anderson on behalf of SD Bullion. Smash the like button if you enjoy these bullion market updates. And be sure to visit sdbullion.com forward slash sweepstakes to enter our free 500 ounce silver coin giveaway. Make some room in your safe because a whole lot of silver could be coming your way. SD Bullion's Monster Box Sweepstakes is back. Featuring 500 of SD Bullion's very own Silver Tree of Life coins in a Monster Box for the first time ever. This stunning silver coin is a highly detailed masterpiece featuring a hidden inscription on one of the tree branches that changes every year. So put on your best flannel and become one with the forest and take your shot to win 500 silver trees from SD Bullion because someone's going to win it so why not you? Click the link below for your chance to win.
The spot silver and gold markets were slammed to close this week. The spot gold price closed just under 2300 an ounce bid, while the spot silver price finished just above $29 ounce bid. The spot gold silver ratio climbed to close at 78. We alerted our bullion buying customers here at SD Bullion today on the spot price sell-offs. Luckily, inventories are pretty flush for the moment and thus price premiums over spot for many proper silver and gold bullion products are thin for customers to prudently acquire over this weekend. In terms of the potential for further spot price sell-offs, we're going to focus in on gold because she is the leader of silver, at least until the later mania phase moves into higher gear. The short and medium downside support beams are as follows. The spot 2,200 an ounce and just below are both psychological and technical support zones. As well, that figure is the 100-day moving average support level as well, and that is often the downside support when gold is in a bull market. The spot 200-day moving average is currently just under 2,100 an ounce. We'd probably need to see a bank derivative deflationary bomb to go off or something like that. But yeah, there are 63 U.S. banks on a real mark-to-market -market basis that are technically insolvent according to the FDIC's latest report with something like a half trillion unrealized losses yet marked down. I'd argue the number is more likely in the hundreds of banks that are technically insolvent. They haven't admitted it yet. And if things go real wrong, it's likely in the thousands potentially with commercial banks coming into the crosshairs. Now this all said, it's not uncommon to see gold bullion bull markets run from a near 25 handle to a 20 handle as occurred in late 1978, for example. This time though, this growing gold phenomenon is global. So good luck getting all the players on the bear side of the boat for a tip over. This coming Monday is a holiday in China. So eyes to the charts as spot price sell-offs might continue. Bottom tweet right here was kind of interesting today. A random Chinese onlooker spread the rumor that China is having a tough time acquiring large quantities of gold at the moment. Again, in this covert financial war ongoing, take anything you read in here with grains of salt. Commodity investors Go Ring and Rosenswag had a recent quarter two update for readers. Allow me to read their most prescient points about the gold bullion bull market ongoing. They wrote, when Eastern buying drives a precious metal rally, it tends to advance in an orderly manner, with few gaps higher. The Eastern buyer, for whom gold is a fundamental part of the cultural identity, prefers to buy during periods of weakness and sell during periods of strength, providing ballast and stability to the gold market. Western investors tend to do the opposite, increase their interest as prices rally and dump metal when they sell off. Over the past five years, high gold prices have largely discouraged Chinese and Indian retail buying. However, in their first quarter 2024 gold demands report, the World Gold Council highlighted how both Chinese and Indian retail demand has surged. Given gold's recent strength, Eastern retail demand is unusual. Chinese retail demand purchases totaled 110 tons in the first quarter, 70% higher than in 2023, despite gold having rallied by 10%. Indian retail demand rose to 41 tons, 20% higher than one year ago. The World Gold Council summarized this as so. Western and Eastern markets tend to see contrasting trends in gold investment. Typically, investors in Eastern markets are more responsive to price and will tend to react to a sharp rise by sitting on the sidelines, waiting for a pause or corrective pullback in the price as an opportunity to buy, and or by taking profit and cashing in on their gold investments. Western investors have historically been attracted to a rising price, and tend to buy into the rally. The most recent quarter has seen those roles reversed. Western investors will likely become aggressive gold buyers once real rates fall, driven by either a Fed rate cut or rising inflation. If this were to happen, Western buying would compete with central bank purchases. If Eastern buyers are no longer as price sensitive as in the past, then all three groups could simultaneously bid for gold, putting extreme upward pressure on prices. Since 1999, gold rallies have been extremely orderly, thanks to offsetting behavior from Eastern and Western investors, with central banks primarily regulated to the sidelines. Are we entering a period of extreme gold volatility last seen during the 1970s? Unless they're careful, Western investors risk missing most of the move. In the 1990 to 2011 rally, Western investors only purchased gold at the very end, once the bull market was mostly over and immediately ahead of a significant pullback. Gold can rally with little Western participation it certainly did in the 2000s, and the gold bull market currently unfolding seems to be following a similar pattern.
This week, Poland admitted to adding another 10 tons of gold bullion to her growing gold bullion reserve pile. That's basically a 737 cargo plane full of gold bullion that went to their growing central bank pile within her sovereign borders. And while the Eastern world citizens and many of her major nation states have been buying gold bullion in gigantic size compared to the West, basically since the spot price of gold was about 20 to 50% less than it currently is priced at the moment, the commercial bank UBS, after having recently gobbled up bankrupting competitor Credit Suisse, admitted that their high net worth investor clients have only about 1% globally allocated to precious metal investments in all forms and or proxies. Meanwhile, this week's U.S. stock market algorithm glitch is fair warning as the $625,000 per stock share Berkshire Hathaway A melted down to a price of $185.10 on this chart you see here. Of course, no plebeians were able to take advantage of this error, but my cynical side is wondering about how this works if we see something akin broadly. You know, great taking like warnings actually coming to fruition. Anyway, U.S. bubble high net worth investors at UBS have even less than 1% allocated, so good luck. The U.S. bond bear market continues onwards as the world central banks continue buying gold in record volumes. Of course, China's recent pause aside, the fiat dollar's share of global reserves continues to dwindle while the global gold reserve share trends higher. Even seemingly lawless City of London consultants have to forecast that this 2024 central bank gold bullion buying bar will be the third highest in human history. Now that is admitted government central bank buying and selling through April in 2024 thus far. Again, take this data with grains of salt. There's absolutely no way governments are telling the exact truth of what's going on. For anyone gold literate and market conscious doing research, you might know that nations like China and Russia are closing ties like the U.S. Pentagon feared they might. It's no coincidence that the two nations have coordinated their official gold reserve admittances pretty much since the 2008 global financial crisis. If you didn't know, both countries have large piles of gold already in their sovereign respective wealth funds. While they both are neck and neck each year as the biggest gold miners, Russia has two proven gold mines with over 3,700 more metric tons of gold to pull in the decades coming. While China has conservatively doubled to four times or more than what she admits in her gold bullion reserves at the moment. Meanwhile, our no gold reserve owning neighbors up north are watching their fiat loony melt away in value versus gold and silver as time proceeds. Silver premiums above spot paid in China continue to remain robust and wide, gapping out nearly $5 an ounce in this week's silver spot price weakness. Again, that's for industrial size 1,000 ounce bars. The Shanghai Futures Exchange silver inventories are again at eight year low levels. The Shanghai Gold Exchange silver inventories are again at six year low levels as well. Their collective 71 million ounces is about half what China imported in silver in 2023 through their mainland and Hong Kong combined. Now cut to the shadow Eastern price of silver back when the Reddit silver squeeze phenomenon kicked off in late January, early February, 2021, the shadow Eastern price at the time was beginning to climb walls. And then it was just under 225 an ounce. Well, it has since ballooned to now just under 400 an ounce. And why this matters so much is that this phenomenon is literally draining the Western world of 1,000 ounce silver exchange float and unsecured silver ETF inventories. When the physical rubber finally starts putting skid marks on the road, the red spot price line here on this chart and the Eastern shadow price line will likely reconvene for a fifth time throughout this full fiat currency era. Mind the gap. Now here is that same ongoing east versus west for spot price data in a non-logarithmic chart so you can better see the ridiculous situation at the moment in the world silver price discovery markets. The chart is so ridiculous you can't even see the underlying black line. This is going to have a dramatic ramifications in time, so position prudently and hold tight. The ride promises to get crazier and more volatile than I could ever dream nor fictionalize here. For those buying bullion in the United States bullion market, take advantage of the spot price weakness this weekend at SD Bullion and potentially the weakness that comes next week. That will be all for our weekly SD Bullion market update. As always to you out there, take great care of yourselves, those you love.
If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and share it with those you love. Subscribe to our channel and hit that alert button so you know when we publish new bullion market updates.